Got some new toys. So this is gonna make the job easy to attach all the cabinet faces to the front face of the cabinet without having to pre-drill and have countersink screws and big holes to fill in and so on. Um, they're just gonna be these tiny little nails. So, let's see what we get in the box. Classic unboxing videos. So this one here takes two different types of nails. And you have multiple lengths and thicknesses. There's a few different ones you can get from Ryobi. You can get the cheaper version that just does the smaller nails, which would probably work fine. And then just get this little packet here. So you can see the type of nails we'll be using. Oh. Oh. And um, this particular this particular nail gun's about three hundred dollars, all the bits. But there is a cheaper version. I got this one because I'll use it for multiple things and having different size nails. Um, this is always a win. But there's a bit of a guide. Oh look, it came with nails. I didn't know that. But there you go. Doing the front cupboards or the overhead cabinet fronts and so I've chosen to keep it all the same material and basically I've marked out all my dividing sections and I'm just going about cutting them out like that so they'll then we'll end up with all the door pieces as well as the frame the front frame Got some lines marked up. And for me, I found it easiest just to drop it in really slowly. Be sure to mark all your cupboards so you know which door went where and the orientation, top, bottom, so on. Otherwise, it will be confusing later, so that's important. All right, so we've got our cupboards cut out and marked up. These are going to be the overhead cabinet doors. Um, and I've given them all a nice sanding, got them smooth, with the edges, all you want to do, make them nice. And now I've got some creamy white house paint. If you look on Marketplace or secondhand, generally you can find the house paint at a relatively discounted price. I'll buy a whole tub and use it for everything. And you've got the same colour if you need to do touch-ups later. Um, I'm starting by using a brush. And for that reason, to be able to get all the paint in all the crevices I thought having some bristles will help get the paint into where it needs to go a little bit easier and uh, this will probably dry with some brush stroke marks but tomorrow I'm going to do a second coat with a roller and then we should have a pretty, pretty good paint finish with our brush strokes so yeah, let's get done <laughs> Painted all our uh, tops, covered faces, and there's our shelves in there. All right, and welcome back to the door fronts. I'm gonna start attaching some hardware and getting things measured out. Uh, this will be one of our smaller doors. We have 
open hinge on either side and then we've got these fancy push button latches that will go on behind Whoop, that way and you drill a hole the size of the inside of that and when you stick it on it will look amazing bucks and push them up beep, beep. so the way to make this easy is in my bus, pretending this is the cupboard and this is the size of the front rail. So basically this is our measuring stick to get the distance right here. So we're going to put our push lock in and the way this locks in, if that were the inside of the cupboard, I'm going to attach this little bracket and then that goes in and out. And we walk on. Another trick too is to get some tape, put that over the hole when you drill your large hole, and uh, that'll stop the wood from cracking and peeling out. So. Let's get the whip. All right, so here we are back at the door. Put a bit of tape down where my sander is, so I can mark the tape, not the door. So, 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 Measured inside and it was 25. Okay. The center of that pin is 1.5, 1.6. So we go from that point to 1.6. This is going to fit there, on the reverse side of the door, obviously, and then behind it, and you can see that's our latch. And inside the bus, this will screw on to that rail, like that. And you will go in like that. I'm going to go double check my measurements, make sure this rail fits, that that's right and everything, and then make sure it's perfect and cut these out. So, good thing you double check because you always realize there's a slight mistake. So what we measured before was the S25. However, on top of 25 is this little piece. So, it'll be 25 plus this guy. Go ahead and do that now. Right. These are quite deep. It's a lot that comes out. It doesn't need all of that, you know. It could still lip onto that and be fine. Um, so yeah, that comes out quite far. Which means you're better off leaving a slightly larger <laughs> gap than this, because if it were too small, then it would hit without it and we don't want that at all so that plus a mill gives it plenty of room for this because it's quite large and ensuring that they don't scrape when it closes this is the bit i have to the size and it's not quite there so do it with that one and then a little bit of hand sanding to make bigger fit and remember we only want it the size of this ring not the outer the inside and that slides into place Go ahead and put, these on. put our hinges on and our plastic ring in. The next thing to do is attach this. I'm just gonna hang that over a table. And pop that in. Like that. Uh, just want to make sure that that's level. Okay. 
and then put a couple of screws in it. Obviously make sure that the screws aren't too long and won't poke through the other side. All right, as you can see, we've got our little ring in. Next thing to do is measure that. Put our hinges on. And then put in the bus. Double thumbs up. All right, so what we're doing now is putting the front faces on, the frames, so to speak. And now we get to use our new toy. Pew, pew. Pew, pew, and uh, pew, pew. Highly recommend having this tool. It just makes life so easy. And I think I'll stain the bottom with a dark stain and those top parts are going to be painted white. So then we'll just go up and give everything a sand, get rid of all these markings. Putting on the extra pieces here and here because when my door faces close, then they'll have something to close against. I could have done that sooner, but they're just going to go there. And um, you won't really see those at all once the top of front is in place. It's the only way to put all the faces on without drilling a million holes. And I mean, I'm going to Yeah. Things you can do. Yeah. Shoot them at everybody. Mm -hmm. See how well it goes left handed. Apparently, you can put like salt or some sort of grain in it. No, 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 Oh wow, you got heaps. So if you want to hook those up to that battery, you can put the cables down there. The line. What? Connect those batteries back to the battery. You want to bring the battery up the way to get in this shit? Yeah, I think that's what you saw. That one's on. Oh look, that side's on too. But it only goes to here for some reason. Alright, well now that we know that all our wires are 
bang us. Um, would you like to grab me a drill, Ollie? Big enough to go through this hole. Yeah, well, the drill and a drill bit. All right, now that we know all our wiring works, back to installing the drawer faces. And there's our shelves in there, but we want to fill in all the nail marks and screw holes. Got some one coat stain varnish here. It is satin or dark brown. And then antique walnut was the closest one I could find in the shop. So that's a stain, which we're going to stain our pine with. And this is just a filler putty to fill in. We've got we filled in all our holes, all our nail holes and screw holes. And we'll just let them dry and then sand them back. You'll see it in the little holes that I was trying to fill in. You could sand it all the way back, but I'm pretty happy with the smoothness of where that's at now. This was the main reason I did it, because I wanted to fill in all the joins. So I'll continue that. Note to self, maybe use a flexible Sikaflex that's sandable for the joins, because they, if there's any movement later, there will be cracks. So for joinery where there will be movement, use some sandable Sikaflex or something similar. So on this face, you can see I've already filled in all the nail marks and any gaps. I'm going to paint the front faces white to suit the doors. And then underneath, I decided to stain it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use this walnut putty to fill in all of my I'm not very good at this. I'm gonna come back and touch it up. But that's the point. I'll fill in all the screw holes. And then when we do stain it, you won't see any of those. Woohoo, that's all done. Time to paint. It got dark on me. That's much better. White. How good is that? I do have some white shells. Alright, it's the next day, a little bit more sanding, clean everything up, and then it's time to get these suckers stained and varnished and looking good. Alright, because we're all about backbreaking work, um, basically I've filled all the holes, all the screw holes, um, with some putty, and then I'm going through with the sanding gloss. I'm doing the upside down wiggle. Pretty much just got to stand all of the bubble smooth. 
Let's speed things up a bit. Time for some speed sanding. This is not easy work. You'll learn to use your left hand. Yeah, close these windows to get the sunshine off of me. The beauty of having a half done bus is I've got the ventilation fan working, sucking some hot air out, so that's helping. The reason we're doing this is to get the shiny kind of protective coat that comes on it off so the stain will get the wood evenly all over. Alright, so we're on to our staining. I've got this here. It is a dark brown one coat satin and varnish. Stain or stain and varnish, but satin, which means it's uh, low gloss. So I've chosen weapon of choice. Hey. I really like it. Probably does it a little justice, but. It really picks up on the light and dark, but I think that's just where the windows are and it gets the reflection. But oh, I, it looks all, all one. So we'll keep going, we'll do all of that, and all of that, and we'll have big muscles. Phew! Thank God for this fan doing its thing. Without that, it would be hot in here. Yeah. I've only put one screw in so I can jiggle these and make sure they're where I want them. That looks pretty good to me. And but yeah, you know, such a small screw into pine. There's not really any need for pre-drilling. They do have the, the quick latches. Um, but yeah, you also want them to be pretty on there. So I'm happy with that. It opens, it closes. It's 
not getting stuck anywhere. Um, I might pay a little bit more attention next time and make sure that my hinges are 100% straight. Because I can see now that it might just be a little bit. So this time we're going to get the measurements right. So what I'm going to do is measure from the top all the way down to this lip and then we know exactly the height so we can measure it on our door and get that perfect. It seems like that one there is exactly 25. Now that we've got our measurement, we can do that. I know our video is a little bit backwards here, so you've already seen all of that. And we'll just continue on to this step. Still got this side to do. Just before I went ahead with these, I thought I'd just make sure that all the lighting was sorted out. <coughs> Basically, <coughs> the light. <coughs> all right. So basically, the light here is activated from a switch on this end and a switch all the way over here, and you can turn it on and off from either side. Now, I've gone one step further. And over on this one, we've installed a little sensor. So this is a 12 slash 24 volt sensor, so it'll work on both. And just there you can choose the timer on how long it'll stay on for. Um, the LED strips from this cupboard to this one is its kind of own system running off power from this side. So that means when you open this door, it'll activate it. With the door shut, none of those lights will come on. The switch down here and here activate the whole lighting across this cabinet and all the way through up to here. And that was the idea. Um, but that strip runs to here and stopped and then connected over here. So what I decided to do was connect up these two strips just to see how it goes. Because then if you open this cupboard, it will turn all the lights on. And if you activate the switch, it will turn all the lights on. So it kind of had like two modes. Um, so we're gonna try that out. Just a little tip. You can see where I've made the connection here um, and I've silicon that up. And so the tip is, if you get your fingers and wet them, make them really quite wet, then when you put your silicon on, you can kind of mold it and shape it and get it pretty close to what the original light was. And just to hide the connections there and make them safe. And then last, these are super easy to install. You see there's the output and the input. It'll automatically switch between 12 or 24 volts. And so your input's a power, the output is your light. Automated techie techie cupboard. And I've connected the LEDs down that end, so actually, when you open this cupboard, all the lights will come on, which I thought was pretty cool. Or you can opt for the switch. And you'll see when I flip the switch, the lights get brighter. Cool. So, um, I mean, it's a really long LED strip that goes all the way down, all the way down. Um, and so the power source for the automated lights coming from this side has to go all the way around before it gets to here. Whereas the power from the switch uh, comes from there. So it's much shorter run and just shows here how much voltage you can lose in the long run. So we've got a few different options there. Really cool. Now let me show it all off with some slow moving pictures. 